Namaste. First, I'd like to thank Sivar Society for providing me with this opportunity to present my opinion with you guys. And today, I'm going to talk about why I switched from React to Sivar.js. These are entirely my personal opinions. It doesn't mean that you'll have to switch from React to Sivart yourself. What I present here are my personal preference that I felt while using React and using Sivart.js. So my suggestion to you is you personally try it once, try both the frameworks and then stick to the one that solves your need and that also works great for you. So let's get started with why Sivart. The first and foremost thing that I found out about Sivart is that it's a lot easier to get started with than other frameworks like Vue.js and React.js. And that is because significant part of the framework is plain old HTML, JS and CSS, which is easy to understand and which most of the developers, if they are looking at the front end, they have already learned. And even if they have not learned HTML, CSS and JS before, it is easier to get started with Sivar.js. And if you know Sivar.js, it's easy to learn or you know already significant portion of HTML, CSS and JS. And if you know CSS, JS and HTML, then you already know significant portion of the Sivar.js. That is why it is easy to get started with Sivar.js. We can see here the example, a React component and a Sivar.js component, both of which do the same thing. In the left, we can see a React.js component, a simplest functional component that has some props. And in the right, we can see a Sivar.js component, which has the same props. In the left hand side, we can see that it is a totally new syntax. So for React.js, there is something called JSX. That is, we can write HTML codes inside JavaScript. And it has a completely new syntax. We have to define a function and then pass in props. And then we get here props.start, props.stop, props.total, those kind of thing. Comparing same thing with Sivart component. Here we have a script tag and then here separately we have HTML and this looks a lot similar to HTML syntax. There are no extra syntax, just we are defining a variable with export keyword and then we can use these variables in our HTML like we are doing with HTML templating engines and it's very easy to understand because everything looks similar to HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Next, Sivar.js scoping styles inside a component is very easy. That is because in each Sivart component, we can use a style tag where we can apply CSS and that CSS is scoped only to those components. And we can even apply global CSS by creating a global CSS file. We can directly write here style and pass our CSS. And these styles will be scoped only in this component. And React has similar thing. We can directly import CSS inside this component and so on. However, it is not as straightforward as the Sivart.js. With Sivart, there is a built-in store for data sharing across components. And right now, React.js also has a built-in context API. However, when I started with React.js, there were lots of options for state management, but there wasn't any built in solution. So there were solutions like Redux, Movex, Flux, and I had to learn a lot. Like I had to check out Movex. I had to check out Redux and I finally stuck with Redux in React, but that had lots of overhead. Later, I tried Movex and I switched to Movex, which was a bit easier than Redux. However, with Sivart.js, there is a built-in store API that we can easily use to share data across components. And another important thing about Sivart.js is that it is a compiler, not a framework. And what's the difference between framework and compiler? So framework provides us with set of tools that 
are available even in the runtime. So React.js application when built completely, the bundle contains not only our code, but the framework itself because it requires framework to run in the runtime. However, with Sivar.js, that is not the case. A Sivar.js application when built, it will compile the code that we have written in the syntax of Sivar.js that is mostly JavaScript, HTML and CSS and some other Sivar APIs that gets compiled down to CSS, HTML and JavaScript so that there is no framework overhead in our application. So there is no other code except the codes that we have written, which is compiled into proper JavaScript and CSS and HTML. So this is what makes Sivar.js faster during build time as well as in runtime. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope this will give you some idea about what Sivar.js is. And then again, finally, what I suggest is please try it yourself before sticking to it because someone else said so try it yourself try both the frameworks react.js and sivar.js try it both and stick to the one that solves your needs that solves your problem and also that is easier for you to work with and that technology should speak to you so that you not only solve your problem you enjoy doing it thank you see you again